Hello everyone, this is Bradley. In the past, I've made a tutorial talking about random color in native Blender, the way you change the seed or shifting color ramp or so. These methods certainly work for animation of the product as well, but that method likely can't give you unlimited choices of colors because you basically select a color from a color ramp, and the color ramp can contain unlimited colors. Even if you can change the color using other nodes, these are never unlimited choices. And of course, you have to manually set your color ramp, which must not be as random as it's expected. So today, we're going to talk about true random color using animation nodes. If you have watched my advanced plexus tutorial, then you may find that I have mentioned a preset called random color. And that's the preset that we're going to build. Be aware the preset has to be in your startup file to work. So here is a very simple setup that I've created using animation node. It's to distribute the cubes over a grid of matrices created from distributed matrices node. And all of these objects are using the same material. And all of all these objects having the same vertex color layer. And if I take a vertex color into the color socket, you can see currently now nothing changes. They are still having the same colors, but I'm going to use a preset which is called a set a random color. And this is the node that we are going to create. And if I put the object into object list, you can see instantaneously we are having random colors. And this color is, you can shift these colors, you can change the hue range of these colors, you can even change the many, many other things of these colors. Essentially, feel free to change with all values, and there's HSV type as well. So basically, this is what we're going to do today. It's true random color that you can really switch from unlimited choices of colors if you want. Or you can narrow the range so that more specific color can be chosen. But essentially these are all unlimited choices. And the principle of this preset is we're going to use a node which is called a set vertex color. However, this node cannot receive multiple inputs, so it will not form a linkage, meaning that we have this entire preset has to be within a loop that you can input an object list, and uh, within the loop, you can have a single object input. So let's basically do that. I'm going to delete this set random color and select our object matrix output. I'm going to hit W and go to right, so loop through objects. And uh, within the loop, then you can connect the object into the object socket. And I'm going to put this vertex color layers into the parameter. I think this is important because sometimes you don't necessarily to have only one vertex color layer, but probably multiple and so on. So I think this is the one way to do that. And uh, here we can use a single colors to change all of them. But uh, this is not what we want. We want each different object to have a different random color. So we're going to combine a different color. Here, in case, Maybe sometimes you're generating a random color within the loop already. So I'm going to build a loop, a group uh, in preset, which is called the random color. And within this loop preset, I'm going to name that as a set random color. So now we have two presets. So the group input will be used within a loop if you form that already. And the loop preset will be used if you don't have a loop and you can directly use that for multiple objects. And this is kind of idea. And within this random color, I'm going to take a integer. I'm going to name that as seed. And then I'm going to combine color. And I'm going to output this color. So next stage is to generate a random number for each socket. Oh, by the way, one thing I have to mention is that there are four ways to generate a color. 
but uh, many times I'm not I don't like the RGB and the YQ it's very hard to understand in my opinion but HSV and HSL is something that I think is very straightforward so I'm going to focus on these two methods only and the difference between HSV and HSL is only about the value and the lightness the exact difference is very hard to tell you can look for the answer in Wikipedia but what I can say is the value keeps the hue of objects but the lightness when the lightness is one then you really just get white regardless how other values looks like and this is certainly not the case for values so just to give you kind of ideas but uh, we're going to make both of them in case you may prefer HSV or HSL. It, it doesn't not really matter. Because sometimes I don't even know whether I would like to use HSV or HSL. So we're going to do both of them. It's kind of very simple. So I'm going to take a random number for hue, saturation, and lightness, and uh, so on and so forth. And I'm going to put the seed into seeds number into one number and I'm going to put the minimum and the maximum into the place and certainly you can name that like a hue minimum and hue maximum and I'm going to shift the deduplicate this random number be aware for each node they have a different node seed meaning that even if you have the same seeds as I'm doing right now there outputs will be completely different because the node seed is different so that you don't need to do extra math to make the seed different in this case you just need to simply just input everything repeat over and over again oh by the way uh, there's a mistake that I made that I need to put the minimum and the maximum to a different place and I'm going to name that as saturation minimum Saturation maximum. And for the value or lightness, it's basically the same. Then the value minimum. And the value maximum. I'm going to put that to saturation and the other two values. So now we are using HSV. I'm going to simply put the alpha into one. Or you can try to keep that zero, but I, I don't know the exact how it will actually affect our color, but basically this is kind of idea at this moment. And to generate, so I'm going to name this as a HSV. But to make it, keep it simple, so I'm simply going to duplicate this HSV and make another copy. And basically do the same things. But I'm going to output that to another socket and name that HSL. So now we have a preset that generates random colors, which is either HSV or HSL. And I'm going to put the seeds back into the parameter. And actually, basically, every other thing is in the parameter as well. And then we're going to decide whether we're using HSV color or HSL color. So here I think the way is because we're not going to duplicate this and set the two vertex color, it will cause complicated issues and so on. So here we're going to in the parameter let's generate a boolean and then let's name that HSV over HSL. So when this boolean is on, it will choose HSV. When the boolean is off, it will choose HSL. So the exact way to do that is to use a switch. And when the boolean is on, then it should take a HSL, a HSV, and then it took a HSL. And uh, to change these presets or node trees, you can simply put this HSV 
onto the top. But uh, it does not really matter how you work with this because you probably won't see all these trees if you're using this as a preset. Then we're going to put these output numbers into the colors. So now basically we're having this preset done. And this is basically all about it. So now you can change this seed. You can see the seed does not really change. The reason is that you're for each loop you're using the same seed. But we're going to change the seed number. So let's take a float math. And I think I'm going to use multiply because I think it's there's some reason that I would like to use multiply. It essentially gives more kind of random numbers. And once I apply to that, if you as soon as your seed is not a zero, then you will give a completely different number. If you simply make it to add, sometimes the change will not be very much. You can see it's still basically a general the same group, but it, rather they shift in numbers. So let's make it multiply so that you really give a complete random group of numbers. And then with, you can change the hue, maximum values and so on. And by hitting this value off, uh, by hitting this boolean off, then you can see Everything has been worked very well. Here's another thing that I hope you to be aware is that how to shift this color. So currently whatever we are talking about is to set a random color. It's more kind of a static things. If you change the random seed, you change everything. But I also would like to shift the colors. Like the hue goes from red to blue and uh, goes from blue back to red and so on. And here we're going to use a function which is called a modulo. And I'm going to implement this function within our random color nodes. So here I'm going to use a function which is called a modulo. And I've explained this for quite many times but I'm going to explain again. So firstly let's just take a float mask and set it to type to modulo. And let's set the B to 5. And then let's keep the A as 0. So now you can see the output is 0. If I set the A to 1, then output 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4. But if I'm changing the A to 5, then it will output 0. So the whole principle is that idea is that I'm using 5 to divide it by 5. And the actual output is the number which is always smaller than the value b. So this is the idea. If I'm putting 1 divided by 5, so 1 is a and the b is 5. So now because a is already smaller than 5, so if I'm taking a fraction then the a is the output. Okay. So on the other side, if what if I'm the a is 6. Then you can see it will cycles back. Then I'm outputting 1 again. And this is what will happen. So basically idea is by using modular function I'm always cycling through the numbers. So the A will never be larger than B but the A will always as low and the lowest A must always be zero. And this is the idea. So what we are going to do is simply just to put these random numbers to the place. And I'm going to switch the B to one because all these hue, saturation and the values will basically be limited to between the range of zero and the one. But this is still not what we want because now we put numbers limited to 0 and 1 but there's nothing changes we're not animating these values 
So what we're going to do here is I'm going to add another float mass, but I'm going to add these numbers. And by adding these numbers, I can shift these colors. And I don't need to worry that this number is actually larger than 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9. Because it'll, due to this modular function, it will be cut off for the number which is below 0 and 1. It will also will cycle very well. So here I'm simply just going to put a B into another new input. And I'm going to call it color shifter. So within this random color, I have a color shifter and I can put that to new parameter. And with this color shifter, then I can change with this preset as well. And after this part, I think basically everything is done. And you can have these two presets saved on your, in your startup files and you call them names as you want. So you can shift A and set the random color. You can call any nodes that you have made a preset of. If you would like to change the default value, you just hit N and it goes to node settings and you can change all these inputs. And the input you change here is the default value. So I would recommend it never to put the seed into zero. Otherwise all of them will have the same seed but uh, just to change the whatever other numbers, it will just uh, be fine. And uh, basically this is it. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll probably see you next time. Bye bye.